Hi everybody, welcome to Visual Wilderness. We're glad to have everybody here tonight. And we have a very special guest with us tonight. We're really excited to introduce to you the incredible Clint Birkinshaw. Um, Clint, if you could just tell us a little bit about yourself. We'll get started and then the rest of us will introduce ourselves briefly, but you're kind of the, the uh, interesting one here tonight. So go ahead and we'll start with you. All right, g'day everybody. Um, I'm Clint, as you know. Um, I have a uh, brief summary about me. I've been uh, on the go traveling for probably the best part of the last decade and I've um, been getting into, obviously it's got me into photography a, bit, a, bit, a little bit along the way and um, have just come back off of a 15 month stint and um, yeah, happy to get back into things and I'll be welcomed back by you guys. It's a, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to have you. Uh, Jay and I uh, contacted Clint uh, just a couple of days ago. We we got together with him on a hangout and and started talking to him about what he's been doing and and the places he's been and you know it it's really kind of fascinating to hear um, what what he does on a on a daily basis when he's traveling because I I think it's never the same thing from one day to the next. <laughs> Am I right, Clint? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, that's, that's the thing about traveling. Um. Every single time we try to make plans, nothing ever goes to plans. You always end up going somewhere different and uh, seeing something that you don't expect. So it's a, kind of a very random life for a while. Yeah. Um, <laughs> different from the uh, 9 to 5, uh, Monday to Friday or something like that. So, so, so do you, interesting. after you come back from this long stint, do you really find that uh, daily life pretty boring, just hanging around, <laughs> not having a challenge of getting to the next location? That's definitely an interesting question because um, I find that cause I've been traveling for quite a while and I find now the biggest culture shock that I have is always coming home and mm -hmm. kind of trying going through the reintegration process and uh, I find that probably the biggest challenge to do to deal with uh, out of everything. Yeah. Yeah, that, that does make a big difference. I know how that is even for our shorter trips. You know, we get back and we have piles of... of unanswered mail, unanswered emails, we have, you know, all kinds of things that are going on at home and people are going, why aren't you on the ball? Come on, you know. <laughs> why do you look like you haven't had a shower in 15 months? <laughs> That's right, it's totally normal, what? <laughs> so, um, so, I have a question for your travel um, um, arrangements, um, but before I go into the question, I just wanted to introduce um, the Visual Wilderness team that is here. Um, Johnny, you start. Brief intro. Yeah, hey guys, Johnny Spencer here, and um, yeah, you can find me over at uh, visualwilderness.com. Yeah, thanks for having me. That's uh, it. I'm Varina Patel. Um, I am one of the the founders, I guess, of Visual Wilderness, if I can call myself that. Um, and uh, then there's Jay. Yep, I'm Jay Patel. I'm a co-founder of Visual Wilderness. So um, here we are talking with Clint, and uh, we have Brent joining us too. Yep. And that is the the famous Brent Mail from Australia. And now, and Brent, we're just now introducing ourselves. We've we've already introduced Clint and and uh, Johnny and Jay and I. So good timing. Go ahead. Awesome. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> You're um, up. My name is Brent, I'm a uh, full-time professional photographer. I've got a studio near near the beach, and um, yeah, I'm loving visual wilderness. I'm in there every day with everyone else, um, loving it. That's me. <laughs> and uh, one one thing that before I go into more details about uh, Clint, Brent, congratulations for your wedding anniversary. Yeah. Oh yeah, it was. Um, I had a rush rush to the. The shops this morning get some flowers. So I'm, I'm <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We've had it planned all along. This is this is being recorded, yeah. Brad. Right? Uh, <laughs> nothing like planning. Good on you, mate. Yeah, well done there. So, uh, Brent, can you give us? I, if if you're ready for it, we can we can do it another way. If you're not, but um, can you give us a little bit of a rundown of what's been going on on in the visual wilderness communities this week before we jump into the the meat and potatoes of of uh, what we're going to talk about with Clint? I'm sure I can, Farina. It's, um, it's been really good. I'm, I'm loving it. We've got um, over 100, 100 members in there. We're creeping up to the 200 mark now, which is, which is awesome. Uh, 
we, there's a lot of discussion, people posting images, a lot of um, feedback on the images. I'm really enjoying that. Uh, obviously, Verena and Jay and Johnny and a few other people are in there all the time commenting on, on images. Um, also, there have been a couple of really interesting threads like uh, like one that I posted where, where someone wanted to use one of my images uh, and give me exposure, like pay with exposure. Yeah. So I put that out there and and, uh, and there's some great resources that came from that. Um, yeah, there's a lot happening. Maybe Johnny wants to fill in what else is going on. Yeah, just a quick point. I was, I'm just fully fully stoked. Okay, that's an Australian thing. Okay, I'm fully stoked. <laughs> no, no, I, I am, yeah, that's it, mate. That's it. We've got three Aussies. We outdo them, so that's fine. I can talk like that. That's right. No, no, but I, I got to say, is the the different the different photographers that are joining from all around the world is just so exciting. You know, there's one lady there who's a hot air balloon pilot. I'm like, damn, yeah, yeah. I want to go up and shoot some aerials out of your balloon. And there's, there's another guy from Norway who gets, he's got the northern lights in his backyard, he said. I'm just like, yeah. that's incredible. So, and, and the breadth of talent that of the, from the community so far has just been awesome. I think we're just going to get in there and, and grow and learn together. It's um, really, really exciting. Yeah. Just, I, just I've been it. really enjoying watching the, uh, the, the postings for the assignment for the month. It is so cool to see what people are putting out there. There's so much variety and you know, so it's it's sort of exceeded our expectations already, which is really cool. So all right, so let's go ahead and move on. Um I want to start with um with uh Clint. I want to put up a photo here that I think is really cool and it, if you want to start by telling us about that, I'm gonna do a screen share and uh oh hold on just a second. It's coming up put my screen up here so that everyone can see um, these photos that Clint has already shared with us and hopefully you guys can see this am I right? Yep. Okay so yep. I'm gonna put up a photo this one right here. Clint you wanna tell us a little <laughs> bit about that? Yeah. Who are that you? One. <laughs> Who's that girl you're kissing? Yes. <laughs> Well, that was my uh, new wife <laughs> at that stage. Uh, yeah, um, we on this uh, last trip that we've been traveling, uh, kind of generally west around the globe over about fifteen months. Um, we decided that we wanted to elope, and um, you know, elope while we're overseas. It's kind of just our person is what we wanted to do. Had no idea where we wanted to do it, so we. Uh, uh, did the papers, we, we got our rings and everything and just carried them around in our backpacks and um, just waited until we could find that uh, moment that kind of come across us. We didn't know where it was. And this photo right here is um, smack bang in the middle of a three-week trek um, in, the Himalayan, uh, in the Himalayas uh, up across the Gokyo Valley, Chola Pass and down the Everest Street. Yeah, this particular photo uh, is just after we crossed around 5,400 meters up. Sorry, not sure that isn't feet. <laughs> uh, 5,400 meters up, and yeah. uh, just coming off a glacier, and we were just um, smacked with this absolutely beautiful scenery. And we just looked at each other and I said, "Let's do it." And so, <laughs> I was the groom and wedding photographer. <laughs> that was a <laughs> 10 second timer and that was our uh, yeah, first kiss uh, after getting uh, hitched um, up there. Well congratulations, it's, it's absolutely breathtaking location. You guys picked a perfect spot. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, you definitely nailed it. So Congratulations, so, that's pretty exciting and so not a bad you. place to get married. Yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely going on a future wall. I generally call it a future wall because I don't Really have one yet? <laughs> <laughs> well, that works. <laughs> so, so you said three weeks, three weeks of travel, um, three weeks of backpacking. Um, were you with a guide, yeah. or did you guys just do it on your own? You can do it with a guide, um, but we decided against it. Um, so we literally just um, put all of our stuff and I ba had a backpack each, we are probably carrying in between 15, uh, 16, 17, 18 kilograms each uh, around about and um, just off. Uh, the best thing about the area of the world is Nepal's really got it sussed out with um, with trekking. They have these little small uh, kind of lodges in which you can lodge in and, and someone will feed you in the middle of 
absolute nowhere. And uh, you just kind of look on, look on your map each day and just uh, try and plan where you're going to go. And there's always one or two along the way which you can stop at. Yeah. So you did one, one of the brilliant things is you don't have to carry a tent or anything like that. So. Oh, that's very good. So you just had your backpack, I mean, your camera gear pretty much. And, uh, um, yeah, camera and gear, clothes, uh, and, clothes and, yeah. Yeah, food and water and stuff like that. So That's a fantastic oh. way to travel. Next time, awesome. take me with you. I'll be the photographer for you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Jay, Jay, I don't think you want to get into wedding photography, mate. No. <laughs> Only in a location <laughs> like this, I think yeah. I'll change my profession. No, just yeah. kidding. <laughs> yeah, I'll start tomorrow I, if that's where we can shoot. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Clint, can I ask you a question? Yeah. How do you fund your travels around the world like that? Because that's what I want to do, man. But how do you actually, yeah, what do you do? Beg on the street or something? <laughs> I haven't yet, but you never know. <laughs> I'm willing to give it a shot. <laughs> um, to earn a buck, I work in uh, information technology. Uh, and basically, um, each time I've come home, since I think 2006 or seven, uh, the longest I've uh, been home in Australia is for about a 10, 11 month period. Uh, so I've only been, ever been doing contracting in IT in, in, in that time. But generally, I never own anything more than a backpack. I mean, my television that I've had um, is, uh, which I have no idea where it is now. <laughs> uh, it's the same television I got when I was 13 years old, this old boxy CRT thing. So. Um, what I've been doing, I've just been, I try not to go out and drink at uh, uh, areas and which saves a lot of money and uh, make your food at home and don't uh, don't buy excessive this, excessive this. So I'm constantly in like extreme saving mode, um, and because I've been doing that for so long, it's just kind of second nature to me now. So that's generally how I've gone about it. That's awesome. You know, so you I have to say okay. that's. A, it's, it's a smart way to do it because, you know, I mean, Jay and I, um, you know, people ask us that all the time. You know, we have kids and we have a family and it, it, and it's tough to yeah. to travel. It's expensive, you know, but but it becomes part of your lifestyle, I think. You know, I mean, Jay and I have a, a much smaller house than we would have if we uh, didn't want to travel all the time. You know, that was something we actually sat down and talked to our children about. Do you guys want to travel or do you want to have a larger house where we're not quite so squeezed in and... You know, it was unanimous. We want to travel. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's that's exactly right. It's uh, kind of just prioritizing what makes you happy. Is it like the moments that make you happy, or things that make you happy? And um, yeah. so, I, I guess both are okay. It's just what I, what you want. All right, so let's move to the next next photo. So tell us about this one. Uh, that, yeah, that photo, that was actually the uh, very same day um, after another couple of hours trekking uh, after you saw that last photo. Yeah. Uh, we came down a little bit and um, there was this lodge and there's a whole bunch of people in there and um, we were talking about how we just got married and all excited and stuff like that. <laughs> and some, some girl yells out, um, if you like photography, you're going to want to look outside. And I looked outside <laughs> and there was this epic scene just unfolding in front of me so um, didn't even, I just picked up my tripod and camera and just absolutely ran outside to try and get into a good position to try and capture <laughs> the moment and if I had waited any longer it was, it was gone in about two three minutes after that so I was quite lucky. Yeah, wow. <laughs> what a way to uh, celebrate the wedding. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> no, right. <laughs> so um, I also wanted to show this one. Um, I love this portrait of you, um, and uh, I think there's a pretty good story behind this one too, huh? There's a, oh, that yeah, that's a um, that's a hot one. <laughs> that was <laughs> hot, all right. in um, northern Ethiopia. Um, do you want the whole story behind it? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Tell, right. tell us how you got there. Tell us uh, why you're oh, yeah. not. Actually, where, where in northern Ethiopia is it? Uh, yeah, this is in the uh, in or next to the uh, the Danical Depression, um, which is kind of it's bordering right near Somalia and Eritrea, um, dubbed by National Geographic as the cruelest place on the planet. And when you're there, you understand why. It's average temperature. It averages the hottest on the planet. It was getting didn't get below 37, 38, 40, 40 degrees at night, and it was it's just 
all day long and all night. It's extremely hard uh, being in that location. Originally, we were actually, we were traveling in northern India and we read about this uh, amazing um, place in the Congo uh, where we wanted to go and, and see uh, this uh, volcano place and um, trek up and look smack, smack bang into the heart of the earth. And we, as we're in Tanzania we were trying to, and, and Rwanda, we're trying to suss out how to get into the Congo, uh, but all the entire eastern side of the Congo had been completely overtaken. Um, by rebels and uh, just completely off limits, could not get into the Congo. It would, it would be a, a suicide going in. So really disappointed. And then we rocked up in Ethiopia, and we just we hadn't heard about it. But there's virtually the exact same thing. Apparently, there's uh, around about four of these on the planet um, wow. of a kind of persistent lava pool. Um, and so we just made sure we did it. But it it's it was in identical depression. And uh, that's really hard to get to, and um, quite dangerous actually. Uh, last year, the uh, whole uh, whole bunch of tourists just um, got executed by Eritrean rebels. Um, so now it's kind of mandatory in order to get there. What you have to, it's like a four-day trip in a in a four-wheel drive through the most insane conditions. But what you have to do is hire your own military. Uh, you you kind of private um, militia uh, people. Um, to to have to protect you, so we, we ha had ten of them um, to to try and protect you against the Eritrean rebels and some of the locals out there, which are kind of hostile to uh, foreigners and whatnot. And so getting out there, that was extremely difficult. It, we arrived in at the base of the kind of the volcano at ten o'clock at night, and these the military, uh, milit milit private militia that we had. Um, went up 20 minutes uh, before us in a pitch black. It was a three and a half hour walk in horrible heat um, up the side of a volcano. Uh, they went there first to try and uh, check it out. And what what they do is they get there and they'll form just a 300 meter perimeter around you. So you, um, when you finally get there, you, you see this glow and then you look over the edge and it's just absolutely amazing. And you've got these guys that's completely surrounding you so you can to spend all night there just staring at this uh, lava pit bubbling and churning away and it was absolutely a surreal experience. That sounds amazing. I was going to say I would love to go there one of these days. But so you, did you spend all night over there? Yeah, yeah we probably arrived at the pit until about, about a one, one o'clock in uh, the morning and uh, left around uh, 5 a.m. So there was absolutely no sleep that night. I'm fine with that. No sleep. Yeah. <laughs> That's a no, crazy story. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And I Maybe. love this shot, this portrait of, of you with the, the glowing <laughs> halo you know, around yeah, your, that, your head. That was a 30-second exposure, and I can't mm. even begin to tell you how hot that was standing there. <laughs> My wife was there, uh, setting up, taking, uh, taking a picture, and I'm, I'm actually screaming at her saying, how long left, how long left? So I'm absolutely burning at this stage. <laughs> Good shorts on too, mate, which is insane. I bet it burn the hairs off your legs, mate. Jeez, crazy, bro. <laughs> and in addition, you had like random lava, lava that's just spitting up and flicking uh, red hot lava chunks everywhere around. So I definitely had to keep an eye on for that one. Wow. Wait, this is like once in a lifetime shot. I think there are not many people who can claim to be there. So that's right. Yeah. And I'd never heard about it until I actually entered Ethiopia, uh, which is, Ethiopia is fantastic as well if you ever want to go there. Oh, yeah. We yeah, definitely yeah. want to go there. So it, it's, it's one of many, many places we want to go. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like it could be a once-in-a-lifetime shot or it could be the end-of-your-lifetime shot. That's true. <laughs> yeah, definitely. That's right. <laughs> All right, so we have we have a collection of uh, photos from Clint here. Um, I want to hear a little bit about all of these if we have time. But Clint, yep. which which one do you want me to go to from here? You click on that one when your mouse is over it at the moment. Sure. sure. All right. I'll stop yabbering on so much as well. <laughs> no, 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 don't start awesome yammering story. on. Yeah, this is good yeah. stuff, and this is a gorgeous shot. The light is just beautiful. What what is happening here? Is this in a cave? Yeah, uh, exactly. Um, as this is a kind of good example of um, trying 
always be prepared. I remember when I first put this up and the story behind it, uh, Jake commented, where was that, your tripod? That, is, exa that right. is exactly the photo that I saw yeah. that drew my attention to saying, who the heck is this guy? <laughs> That's right. So actually, there was, uh, we're in uh, northern Laos uh, for this one, and there was, we just want to go to these uh, kind of outside pools, and it wasn't going to be anything special uh, of these holes in the ground where you can, uh, it's meant to be all right. But it ended up, we were riding a bike there on this most ridiculous road for about an hour, and so I just want to carry as less weight as possible, so I just had my camera bag around me. And um, got there, it was kind of boring, to be honest, and um, so we started doing a bit of investigating and found a cave up on uh, top of the hill uh, of, of this kind of mountain we went up, and inside was kind of all these uh, monk shrines and stuff, and um, went down, and there was this, this guy who was... Uh, praying or something and um, I kind of noticed a beam of light and so I just, it was really dark in there but I scampered over as much as possible to try and get in light and just snap this but of course I didn't really have my tripod so uh, it took quite a few shots to try and get a sharp one um, but yeah, <laughs> it's uh, not a posed photo or anything like that it just all the elements came together and it happened to be in the right place and the right, right time so you got to be raring to go Yeah Oh, that's that's just gorgeous, and I think that you you sort of bring up an important point for all photographers. You know, don't just stand there and shoot what's in front of you. Explore the area because sometimes you'll find something uh, like this. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it's simple. Right? Just moving an extra five meters to the right or something can just dramatically improve your shot. So true. Yep. But I have to say that um, the shots that you've collected over the last 15 months are, are just absolutely breathtaking. And if any of our viewers have any questions, please uh, put them in the chat box for Clint, and we will uh, pass them on to him. Um, yeah, so he can answer. sure. Happy to answer. Yeah, um, we have a few more minutes here. It looks like we're down to about eight minutes left in our, in our uh, talk here. But Clint, tell us a little bit about the, this shot and the next one, which is of a gorilla. Yeah, this one was in, this was in a Serengeti. Um, <laughs> we happened to we were in our four-wheel drive, you know, cruising out in the, in the heat of ten, northern Tanzania and having to stumble across this lioness which was stalking a gazelle. And so we pulled up and it, hanging out the window, for, you know, from a waist that was just leaning right out as far as possible, snap, 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 snap. <laughs> and um, actually, the lioness actually came right up and was using the car as a bit of camouflage to get closer to the gazelle. So this shot was only... Oh, this is on an APS-C sensor with a 50mm one, so this was extremely close. I'm talking about five, six metres away. Um, and when you know, I'm looking through that lens and the lion, lion stops and just looks directly into your eyes, it just sends a kind of a shudder down your spine. <laughs> Needless to say, that was my last shot before I quickly jumped back in the car and slammed the window shut. <laughs> the before lioness was probably... <laughs> Before she changed her mind about that gazelle, huh? That's right. No. She said, oh, here's an easy prey leading out of the car. I'm just going to grab him. He wants to. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, lo I love that, Clint. That's, that's my, my part of the world. That's kind of, I grew up in Africa and just uh, love, the, love shooting oh, the wildlife yeah. like that. And I remember um, being in the Kruger National Park and the, a similar thing happened. Actually, um, a cheetah ran into a... Uh, into a minibus that was chasing these um, uh, impala and um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, not not so good when when the cars get in the way. But yeah, I know the lions actually use the the vehicles to to stalk their prey. It's quite interesting. Oh, nice. Yeah, it allows you to get right up close to them. And this shot in particular was uh, this is in the impenetrable forest uh, in south uh, west Uganda. Um, I've been wanting to see these. Uh, Primates in so long, um, absolutely amazing. Um, when we first rocked up on the after a three and a, a half hour trek in dense jungle, we're talking about we're we're macheting our way through the jungles and following random ele wild elephant tracks and and stuff. And when you first get the the guy was like saying, "All right, you're not going to get within uh, seven meters uh, of the of the gorillas." Um, and there's always the same two trackers go to the gorilla families every single day to make sure they're familiar with them and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then he says, though I said about the seven meters, um, just look under this bush over here. Um, there's the silverback. And then you look under and, and you see this 
enormously 200 250 kilogram thing just eyeballing you right in the right in the eyes. <laughs> wow. Uh, wow. You kind of um, beat your pants a bit. Um, very demoralised. Um, and this was an actual female of this shot. Um, we followed, there were six, six of them in total, which we followed around the local area for a while. And um, we were constantly within just the two metres of them. I mean, oh, the experience wow. was amazing. How kind and, I mean, their forearms, like the size of my torso, they're so gigantic. Um, pretty hefty uh, creatures, and, but absolutely kind and gentle and no harm of uh, uh, intent of harm or anything like that, so... It's uh, really probably one of the most amazing experiences I've ever had in my life. Yeah. So, so Clint, I wanted to ask you, um, all of these travels you are, what, what kind of camera equipment do you carry? Um, well, I've done a whole bunch of uh, traveling previously and stuff. I was carrying around, I uh, used to shoot with a EOS 7D and a whole bunch of 11, 70-200 ultra-wide and uh, standard zoom. And, uh, in for long periods of time, you know, for months and months and months on end, it becomes very wearing. So this trip, I've actually uh, uh, purchased a. Uh, I've been traveling with a Sony NEX7, uh, which has, you know, cut the weight in by thir you know, three quarters or something like that. A extremely light camera, uh, small lenses, small body, can fit in a smaller bag, need a smaller tripod, uh, and for travel photography, I mean. It, it's been the best thing that's ever happened to me for my photography, um, especially travel photography, because the amount of times I've just been able to whip it out um, and it not be an inconvenience or me being uh, annoyed with carrying it around so much, it's, it's been such a huge benefit. So um, the lenses that you have with this camera, are they the same uh, standard Canon lenses or um, Nikon lenses um, or Sony lenses? I actually... I actually started off traveling with three primes, a 19, 35, and 50. Uh, but I noticed I generally loved just, I was getting obsessed with the 19, and I wanted wider and wider. But mm -hmm. when, I just, when I was over there in Thailand, Sony just released a, a 10 to 18 millimeter. So I'm like, <laughs> I am not moving until this arrives in the local post office. And, uh, <laughs> and so I just sat there until I got my ultra-wide lens, and I, that's, that's been my baby since. I can understand that we both love ultra wide lenses. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that one that's in that one's in Laos as well. That's uh, uh I can't remember the falls but mm -hmm. Oh sorry, you're just on yeah, the uh, absolutely stunning um area uh, of of the world. Yeah. Uh, in northern Laos. It it actually reminds me of uh, Havasu Can Canyon here Correct. in uh, here in the US, yes. right? <laughs> yeah. It is exactly I can't wait to come over and visit that. Maybe I'll visit you guys as well. That'd be cool. Yeah, uh, we would love to go have backpacking. To come and see it. Yeah, this the water, color water, and the formations, everything is like that. Uh, we only have yeah. two minutes left. I wanted to give Clint time to um, to go over um, his future plans and things. If everybody's okay with that. Yeah, that's perfect. In the future, yeah, it's, uh, just got back, so you're looking for work and stuff. Um, um, I'm going to be probably in an in immediate future concentrating on some local stuff, uh, you know, photograph Australia for once, and especially South Australia where I, um, I live and have been born. And so I'd really like to capture some of that essence before I, before me and my wife take off again. Well, we can uh, tell you there's some beautiful stuff down there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Apparently, I mean, I've seen it in pictures. <laughs> <laughs> and where can people find you? Uh, my website's explosiveaperture.com. Um, I'll be uh, uh, blogging there uh, along with Google Plus and on Facebook, so uh, you can catch me at any of those. Uh, details right. on uh, my Google Plus profile. So. So we'll, uh, when we uh, put this episode up on Visual Wilderness, we will actually go ahead and, and uh, put your profiles and uh, your, um, your web page up there in case people have questions. And uh, I also want to let everybody know that you have joined Visual Wilderness and uh, look forward to contributing some more of the interviews and the community stuff. Yeah, I can't wait to really get stuck in now that I'm back. I'm going to have some greetings that are out the way. I'm going to have some time. I look forward to such a... Wonderful job, uh, job that you you guys have done there, and I'm absolutely honoured to be interviewed um, by you guys. Uh, absolutely amazing! I'm stoked, and I can't wait to get into the visual wilderness. We can't wait to have you there, and uh, we were absolutely stoked to be intervi interviewing you tonight. So, uh, couldn't have been better all around. <laughs>
<laughs> so just uh, save Thank some of those stories. Much. Yeah, just save some of those stories for us. We're going to be calling you again, saying, okay, uh, "Clint, so. come on over. Let's 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 have some interesting stories." <laughs> That's right. I think we better make Clint a regular uh, a regular guest on our show. I think there's a whole heck of a lot more where this came from. I oh, yeah, please do. Uh, I'll be on yeah, it definitely. Yeah. Well. All right. Well, thank you so much, everybody, for joining us for Visual Wilderness tonight. Thanks to uh, Johnny and Brent and Clint uh, for for taking some time and and uh, you know joining us for the show. I I couldn't be happier to have you all here, and uh, we will see you next time. Thank you. Good night. Thank. All right. Thank thanks, you, everybody. Good night, guys.